Hey everybody, welcome to my kitchen. Today we are doing something really fantastic. A riff on my grandmother's brisket recipe. This was the food of my family for generations and generations. It was holiday food at around, you know, especially for the Jewish holidays. And it was one of the first dishes that I watched my grandmother make. So I'm, I do it all the time and I have come up with a fairly foolproof way to do it. And the most important thing is to use a whole brisket. This is from a relatively small animal. Some of them get a lot bigger, but this one has the horn included, this little rise here. It's not just the flat of the brisket, which is this smaller, thin muscle that runs along the bottom. It's the whole thing, and I've left the whole fat cap on because fat is flavor. We can deal with skimming liquidized fat off of our sauce later on. First thing that I wanna do is season it. I'm gonna make a rub, salt and pepper and thyme and paprika, some real sage, and I'm gonna mix this together. I like making rubs myself that are germane to the dish that I'm making. I love the savory quality that this particular mix has. I use it for lots of different meats, and I massage it into the meat. I mean, these muscle has fibers. Now, I don't have the heat up too high because I don't want to burn or scorch the seasoning rub that's on the outside of this brisket. So, you know, it took six or seven minutes, but we have this really beautiful dark walnut browning on the flat side of our meat. Now the fat side will actually take a little bit more time to color up the same way, and the reason is, there is water present in that fat, a little bit. All right, so we have this beautiful browned brisket. Remember, it's a big piece of meat. Set that to the side, and I immediately add my onions to this. If you want to, you can add a little bit more of that same mixture that you season the meat with. Peppercorns and bay leaves. I'll just lay these on the top. This is the time where we add our garlic. I'm gonna add liquidy solids, the tomato. So rather than put the brisket in and then add the liquid, I'm actually going to add our stock and our vinegar. And I'm gonna let this warm up a little bit and come to a simmer. And once this starts simmering, fat side up, very important. I'll nestle our fennel in there, tent this with foil slide it in the oven. Everyone does that with their foot. Everyone. So our brisket has shrunk considerably, so it's gonna be perfectly toothsome and tender. Well, you hate to say things like, wow, that looks perfect, but wow, that looks perfect. And I like to serve it with that little ribbon of fat across the top, and I put a little fancy finishing salt, take some of this wonderful fennel and onion sauce. I mean, who doesn't love the way this looks as simple? I mean, this is an easy Sunday supper. And stick a fennel frond. Who doesn't like a fennel frond? Anyway, literally, this was dinner at my grandmother's house once a week. Perfect. Melting, tender, still holds together. It rested, all the liquid returned into the protein there. And this is as good as brisket gets. So, make sure you check back every day because it's brisket week here at andrewzimmern.com in our kitchen with our web series, Andrew Zimmern Cooks. And in fact, I just did.